My name is Louisa and we are a British family that have lived in Spain for coming up for 14 years now. That's crazy. I'm Scottish, my husband's English, we met in Spain and we had our family here in Spain. But when we're at home, we talk in English so that the kids learn English, so that they can be bilingual and we try to teach them as much as we can about British culture. So, Naya and Eva, my two oldest girls, they are at school. My husband, he takes them to school in the morning and I stay at home with the two babies. That's one of the amazing things about Spain. If you have children under the age of 12, by law, if you want to reduce your hours at work, you can. Your company cannot say anything about it because it's a law that has been passed by the government. You can reduce your hours up to 50%. I mean, you don't get paid for the hours that you reduce, so obviously you have to take a salary cut as well, but still pretty amazing. So John, my husband, he has reduced his hours. It means that he doesn't work in the morning, and that's great because he takes the kids to school in the morning, he plays with the little babies, and it helps me out so much, and it just helps our family. I think that's the reason behind it. That's why the government allows you to reduce hours in order to achieve like a better work family life balance. So John works from one o'clock in the afternoon to seven o'clock in the evening, like six hours a day. So right now he's just playing with little babies in the garden, spending some quality time with them. Anyway, I have just finished preparing lunch. I always prepare lunch before I pick the girls up because the girls finish at two o'clock. So that's like another thing in Spain. The school is from nine o'clock in the morning until two o'clock in the afternoon. And then at two o'clock in the afternoon, you can either pick your children up and give them lunch at home, or they can stay at school and eat in the school canteen, and then you can pick them up at four o'clock. The option of taking a packed lunch does not exist. So because I'm not working at the moment, I always pick the kids up at two o'clock, and they prefer it because it means that their school day isn't that long, it's only a five hour day, and they get to eat at home, I save money because I'm not having to pay for school lunches. That's another thing that I love about Spain. The way things are, it allows you to spend a lot of time with your family. So like a true Brit, I'm gonna have my first cup of tea of the day. I have so much tea. I think I have like five or six cups of tea a day. I don't like the tea in Spain. They don't sell proper British tea. So I always get my mother-in-law when she comes to visit us to bring me loads of tea. Although in the supermarket, I did find some PG tips. They're really expensive. It was like almost two euros for 40 tea bags. But I've ran out of tea and I don't know when my mother-in-law can come because of the coronavirus. So. I bought them. So today I'm wearing tartan trousers because I miss home so much. So I thought I'll wear my tartan trousers and pay tribute to Bonnie Scotland. John's just started work and we are going to go and pick a man Eva up from school. And this little yeah. one, are you about to start school? Yeah. Yeah? You're going to start school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here in Spain, kids start school so young. They start between two and a half and three and a half, depending on when their birthday is. If they're born in January, they'll be three and a half when they start. And if they're born in December, they'll be like two and a half when they start. I just find that so young. And Luca is Mr. Scottish today. Look at this, right? Fish and chips. And then that's the yeah. Loch Ness Monster. Lukey, show your little Scottish jumper. <laughs> Alba, what are you wearing? Oh, I love your dress. Beautiful. This dress, I got a star. It's got a star on it. Beautiful. Your magic wand. A right princess. Look at you. And it's still I got a wand. I know you've got a star on your wand and on your dress. Luca? Lukey? <gasps> Look at you. Look at this glorious day. Look at that. The birds, you can hear them singing. The blue skies. So beautiful. April is like such nice weather here in Madrid where I live. The summer is really hot, like maybe too hot. July, August, September, it's boiling. 
and then October, November is gorgeous. December, January, February, March, it's really cold. And then April, May and June, again, it's just gorgeous. You know, you, you can wear a jumper. It's not like absolutely baking, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful weather. Lovely, perfect weather to go to the park, to sit out in your garden. And our car is looking lovely and clean because yesterday we had a bit of an incident. We went to a horse riding stables and we took a wrong turn and we ended up going down this road and getting completely stuck in the mud. Like we couldn't move the car. So John had to get out and push the car and I had to like rev it and we managed to do it. Like I drove and he pushed and we managed to get the car out. But that was scary because I thought we were gonna be like stuck in this ditch in the middle of nowhere. And you know, you can phone the car insurance but I don't even think they would have been able to come and get us. Anyway, we managed to get out but the car was disgusting. So this morning John went and he's cleaned it and it's looking lovely. 21 degrees inside the car, like that's hot. So if you watched my last video, you will know that we bought a horse and we were having a lot of problems with her and she was quite aggressive and I didn't know what to do. We've handed her back, we handed her back to the owners because after making that video, she got worse. Instead of getting better, she got worse and it was impossible to catch her from the field. I'd go and she'd start running and trying to kick me and bite me and like it was bad. I don't know what was going on. I just can't, like I can't put my children through that. And I don't have the time like to go and see her by myself. I couldn't go and see her by myself because that would involve leaving my children. I'm not, you know, gonna go and have four children and then leave my four children so I can go and spend time with some pony. The pony was bought for my children and if she's not suitable for my kids then she's not for us. The owner allowed me to hand her back. She didn't give me all the money back. She kept 500 euros of, of my money which to be honest is fine because she was under no obligation to give me anything back like she could have said sorry I'm not taking the horse back or sorry I'll take it back but I'm not giving you any money back so I was just grateful that she gave me most of the money back in hindsight like yeah thank god we did hand her back because she was causing so much stress for the family I was constantly on edge thinking is something gonna happen to my kids or my kids gonna have an accident because she does something to them. I was really worried. So we're now looking to buy another pony. I'm thinking maybe a Shetland pony because like, I wouldn't be scared about my kids falling off a Shetland pony because they're so tiny anyway. All the Shetland ponies I've met are really sweet. They seem to have a nice nature, have a nice temperament. But I won't be able to ride. That's why I wanted to buy Sonnen because I thought I can ride her and the kids can ride her. But I've seen that that wasn't the case at all. I could ride her and the kids couldn't. If it means getting a pony that they can ride and I can't, then so be it. And the most important thing is that they can ride a safe pony. I'm looking, taking my time, I'm not going to rush into anything, and trying to find a nice, suitable, family, small Shetland pony that is safe. You guys ready for lunch? Hey, how was your day at school today? their school bags because John takes them to school in the morning but I get like their school bag ready, their snack and I put their shoes and their coat out and Amaya is doing her homework. She gets homework every day, every single day she has to do like half an hour of homework and she's only in primary one. She's seven but she's the oldest in the class like the majority of them are only six. The education system here is pretty demanding I think because you know they start school so young at like two and a half, three. Infant school is not obligatory so if you want your kids can start school at like five or six but 
everyone does send them to infant school because in infant school they learn to read. If you don't send your kids to infant school they're going to start primary and they're going to be the only ones in the class that can't read and that can't add up and they're going to be at a major disadvantage. So unless you want to teach them to read and add up at home, you send them to infant school. And then obviously when they do start primary, they are expected to be able to read, they get their half hour of homework every day, sometimes they get homework at the weekend. Amaya's expected to read a book, an entire book, every two weeks. So we've ran out of books now, we don't have any more books, so we need to go to the library and get a new book for her. It's a lot. I feel like a lot is expected of these little ones here in Spain. My favourite time of day. Kids have had lunch, we've done a mess homework. This one is getting ready to sit down and watch some TV. This one is asleep, love him to bits, but also love it when he sleeps. <laughs> Amaya and Eva are upstairs playing in their room and I'm just gonna sit down and chill, have a cup of tea, probably look at some ponies <laughs> to see if there's any ponies for sale. It's my favourite time of the day. <laughs> okay, I think I just found a pony. It's so cute. And here's me like, oh, I'm gonna really take my time. I'm really gonna take my time. And I just found another one. Oh, I don't know, it depends on John. It depends if John agrees to get it or not. The next video might be me showing you another pony. <laughs> oh my God, I am completely nuts. This is what happened. So, you know, coronavirus, you can't do anything, you can't go anywhere. So I decided to buy ponies. Because <laughs> at least you can go and see ponies, you know? <laughs> oh, goodness me. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this vlog. John's probably going to go mad when he finishes work and I'm like, oh, I think I've got another pony. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye!